So, I finally took my ass to Rome and I'm standing in the, I think this is the arena area of the Colosseum. I'm not positive, but I think so. Um, yeah. Pan of things and new benches and old benches and rock stuff that compose a gladiatorial arena. Uh, yeah. This is pretty incredible and I've wanted to come here since I was probably a toddler. So, <laughs> I don't know. But there is some cool looking stuff all over. There are some exhibitions and you can go up on the higher floors, but honestly, I don't really see a point. Like, it's really awesome to be in here, but I don't really think the experience is going to be enhanced that much if I climb a bunch of stairs in the rain and take a picture from on high. So, honestly, I think I'm cool with just this. Like, <laughs> yeah, it probably would be an interesting perspective and a difference in scenery, but I'm not a very good videographer, so I don't care that much. And a really nice guy took a picture of me against the backdrop of the Coliseum, so that's awesome in and of itself. And yeah, the, uh, this is definitely a bucket list check mark, so I am so happy to be here. It'd be a little bit better if it wasn't raining, but I mean, it's rain. It's not hurting anything. Water isn't going to kill me, but this is just... It's incredible that it's still here, and obviously they're doing construction on it and renovations to keep it standing, but yeah, I would love to go walk down in this stuff. That would be incredible. Let me see if I can get over the fence here without totally losing my phone to the badness. Yeah. That's where I want to go. And we can, we do have access to the underground. I don't know exactly where that is, but it's just basically where the gladiators were held before they fought. And some training rooms, I believe. And yeah, I might go check it out if I can find it, but it's kind of this, oh, guys are talking. And then they stopped, so, no. Okay. I have no idea what he just said. My audio processing of voices is atrocious, so whatever. He said attention please and then here he goes again. That's awesome. What? I still didn't understand a word of that, but... <laughs> Alright, I think I'm just going to stop this here because it's just going to be me taking video of the exact same architecture. But to be fair, it's pretty badass, so... Who wouldn't? And obviously I will take more video of Rome because it's Rome and it's incredible. The end. Okay, this is the special way out of the Colosseum, specifically for disabled people. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Yeah. It's his own little path. Here is okay. Grazie mille. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. That was a thing that I just did. And 
is pretty incredible. So, huzzah. It is storming quite nicely in Rome this morning. Uh, kind of puts a damper on my plans for sightseeing, but you know, it's a thunderstorm. Can't be disappointed about that. This is the beautiful little terrace area outside my room. I'm not going out because the aforementioned thunderstorm, but it's really cute. I kind of want to go out there later. Maybe if it clears up. But yeah, this is, uh, well, this isn't my hotel, but <laughs> the terrace part is, and um, it's very nice. It's right in the city center. Uh, it's about a 10 to 15 minute walk to the Coliseum, so it's very nice. I'd give you a tour of the room, but it's a huge mess, and I really just kind of wanted to document the thunderstorm because it's gorgeous, and the rain is just hitting the window very nicely. The window is kind of strange. Like, here's the actual window part, and then these little shutters, they don't move or anything like that. They just sort of go in and out, and they're metal, and I mean, they do block a good portion of the incoming wind and rain, so that's nice. Ooh, there's some lightning. Probably gonna thunder here in a second. But, yeah. That's so gorgeous. I miss thunderstorms so freaking much. Living in Denmark, they just don't happen. They didn't really happen in Sweden either. I don't know if it's Scandinavia in general that doesn't get them or what. They happened sometimes in Ireland, but not very much. But where I grew up, it was just all the time. And I adore storms more than pretty much anything in the world. So it doesn't look like the lightning activity is going to be that spectacular for this one, but there's a lot of really nice thunder, so I'm going to go back to bed for a couple hours. It's like 9.30 in the morning, <laughs> but I, I think I'm just going to lay in bed and listen to it for a while, so I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are, because I just adore Rome so far, and I'm going to go check out more later once the storm passes a little bit, or gets a little bit lighter. I've got a rain jacket thing, but... I don't really feel like walking around in the lightning and thunder that much, so, meh, later on. Okay, it's packed here because it's Saturday afternoon and the rain just stopped, but I'm walking down the Via Sacra in Rome, and this is the Temple of Venus, which would be awesome to see, but it's closed for renovations, so that's the thing, that is the arch of Titus down there and I'm walking to that I'm trying to get to one of the Senate houses that was planned by Caesar it's called the Curia Julia and I'm gonna go see that because it looks awesome oh I guess you can get in here somehow eh I'm not gonna bother maybe on the way back <laughs> I've only got about two hours so I don't want to go if it's not a priority I really want to see the Senate House in the Forum, and the sun's going to go down at like 4.30, so got to be kind of careful on what I choose to do. But yeah, this is a very ancient street place, and that's kind of awesome. Oh, damn it, I can't get to the arch from here. But I can go around. Cool. All right. I'm going to have to, I guess. No other way to do it. All right, I need to navigate, so I'm gonna go. I guess you have to go in there to get to it. I'm, I don't really get it, but okay. Okay, I'm inside the Curia Iulia, which was the third Senate house in the Roman Empire. Um, Obviously, as the name implies, it was designed by Julius himself, but uh, he was assassinated before it could be completed, so Augustus finished it for him. But um, those big doors over there, and they're massive. Um, they're bronze. They're not original, but there's renovation work going on on that side, so you can't access it 
or get over anywhere close. Uh, the building is rather plain. I mean, as it should be, it's a Senate house. It's not meant to be anything fun, but the walls used to be marble three-fourths of the way up, but now they are not. There are some little archways and places for altars and whatnot, but yeah. Um, can't see much because the company that runs this place has put a bunch of stuff up, but this was where the senators would hold meetings like that. Marble step over there is um, probably where the senators sat when they were in session. I don't know, but that's what they believe. Uh, who knows if it's actually true. And that's some dude without a head. And yeah. But it's fairly amazing. Um, Caesar designed it in 44 BC. And uh, yeah, that's what he did. The end. Sorry, I'm terrible at narrating this. Um, this floor is kind of a unique feature of the building because the building around it is pretty plain, but this is a Roman artwork called Opus Sectile, which basically they cut uh, other materials and put them in the flooring. I probably can't hold this well enough to get a close-up, but maybe I can go under the rope here. See the structure a little? But yeah, that's kind of beautiful, and it just has similar designs all the way back. And it's huge, I mean, it's at least 20 feet long, probably 10 or 15 wide. But yeah, it's rather gorgeous. The entire building is gorgeous, I mean, it's still mostly intact, the roof has been replaced, and so have some of the exterior things, but... For the most part, it's pretty much how it was. And the big opulent entrance over there with the sculptures is pretty cool. I kind of wish I could see the doors from the outside. That would be pretty awesome. I can take a shot from the back, but it's honestly kind of boring. It's just concrete walls and a small door to be let into. So that's about it. But I've wanted to see this building for a very long time, so I'm pretty pumped. Okay, here's the Curia Yulia from outside. As I said, it's not very exciting. It's just very nondescript. There's a church next to it, which is kind of pretty, but I don't care. And that's something Roman. Who knows? But yeah, this is the edge of the park. Uh, those pillars over there are the Forum, which is fairly beautiful, and I didn't go look around in it because it's quite rainy today and the cobblestones are very wet and sort of slippery, which makes it difficult. Uh, but yeah, the only thing to really see is the iconic archway, or the pillars, I guess it would be a better description but I think they have arches in between them. Anyway, it's pillars, and I'm staring at it from the sides because I can't really get anywhere else at the moment. Uh, I'd have to go all the way back, which I could do, but it's kind of stupid, to be honest with you. There's a temple to somebody, I forget, but it's kind of cool. And then there's stuff over this way, and people are headed my direction and looking annoyed, so I guess I will... Head this way to whatever may be coming. I'm walking down the Via Appia Antica toward Rome, and obviously, many, many millions of people have done this in the past. Uh, this has been a lifelong dream of mine. I have been wanting to come here and stand in this very spot since I was probably 15, so. This is a very overwhelming day for me. I was crying about it earlier. I never thought I would actually be standing here. And I got lucky because the rain has just stopped and I get to smell 
the petrichor and the green because there's a lot of green along this road and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, obviously this is a very ancient road. It's one of the, it was one of the main thoroughfares of the Roman Empire. I think most people are aware of that. If you're not, just look up Via Appia on the Googles or whatever because it's a very famous thoroughfare and it still is. Uh, this is the obviously ancient part, Antica, but um, they do have a more modern version of it that's been a little bit better renovated. This is more of just a historical monument. I mean, obviously you can see that there's not any traffic. They do allow vehicles on it, but I don't think it's very well traveled by car just because it's a historical monument and they're trying to protect it, which makes sense. Um, yeah, there are monuments pretty much all along here. Um, just temples and uh, crypts probably a little bit further up, closer to the city. I am very far out. <laughs> the taxi ride was about half an hour from my hotel, which is in the very center of Rome. It's close to the Colosseum. And yeah, so I could have gone much closer to my hotel and paid a bit less for the taxi, but I wanted to see this part of it. Because this is the part that they show in movies. I, it's probably a recreation in most films. But, yeah. <laughs> they show this part and then that's leading out of Rome. And then that's leading to Rome. So, yeah. I am such a history nerd. Especially Roman history. And I am just... I'm being very inarticulate right now, and I'm not expressing myself clearly at all, and I apologize for that, because there is so much history with this road. There is just so, so much, and I'm completely blanking out on all of it, because I'm actually standing on it, and I never thought I would be. So I am going to just walk down this for a way until I can find some monument that's recognizable to the taxi company. And call a cab, because, yeah, it's too far to walk back. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's just, it's so gorgeous, and I, I really don't know. Okay, I suppose since I'll be walking down the road for quite a ways, I will go ahead and give a bit of a synopsis of accessibility for people with disabilities in Rome, especially the more um, ancient parts. It's honestly been surprisingly good. Obviously, I have trouble with this type of road because the cane tends to get stuck in these little divots between the stones. And that can make things difficult. This one is relatively flat though, so it's not awful. There are some with bigger stones toward the um, more central relics and ruins that are a bit harder to navigate, but it's fine. Most buildings have elevators or very few stairs to access things, so it's really, for disabled travelers, I would say that it's eh, maybe a 7 out of 10. Yeah, I mean, it's much better than one would expect for such an ancient city. I'm sure the more modern parts of it are even more accessible, but for the things that most people come here to see, they're quite well maintained and available for people in wheelchairs or with other impediments to be traversing. So that's fun. But yeah, um, getting here was no problem. The Disability Services staff at the airports in um, Copenhagen and Amsterdam, where I had my layover, and Rome have all been wonderful. Most of Western Europe, their disability services are incredible, so I cannot thank those people enough. Yes, it does take more time to get onto the plane. It does involve a lot of weirdness because they don't have enough staff, and... The waiting is kind of dumb, <laughs> but they tend to get me there, and uh, yeah, I can't fault them. They're always very kind people, 
and the Italian disability staff was incredible uh, in Rome's airport. So I really want to thank them for that. Uh, as I was stepping off the plane, I had to ask the flight attendant to call for assistance for me. And the man came up in his yellow vest and she turned to me and she said, well, you get to hold the arm of an Italian guy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she was right. He was a very attractive gentleman and he had a very soft voice and a nice accent and I was okay with it. So, so that was good. And yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot else to say about it. I haven't really had any issues. I mean, I can navigate stairs. It just takes me quite a long time because I have absolutely no depth perception. I only have one eye, so depth perception kind of goes away. <laughs> um, so changes in level are very difficult for me. It's why I tend not to be out after dark like an old lady, but it's very hard for me to see like the curb on the side of the road or where the levels change on the sidewalk or if you need to step up on them. I usually trip and fall on my ass or my face and it's just not fun. But Rome is quite well laid out for that. Um, I haven't had any issues walking around and I've been walking quite a bit the past few days. So yeah, again, I would say Rome is probably a seven out of 10 on the disability um, accessibility scale. So. Kudos Roma.